let people know where we are and what's happening inside. Sure. And oh, first, in your name, please. Okay. Hi. My name is Tara Hauska. I'm the National Campaigns Director of Honor the Earth. I'm also a citizen of Kuching First Nation and here to stop Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, we're standing in front of the Morton County Courthouse where today 51 folks are being, arrest, are being arraigned um, who were arrested on October 22nd for doing direct actions, nonviolent direct actions to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline. Great. And uh, what are some of the charges, you know, I know they're, they were, uh, you know, do you see any constitutional rights being violated? Um, uh, any comments on constitutional rights being violated? Uh, maybe uh, is it motivated by racism? You know, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. Um, a lot of people were, were charged with uh, criminal trespass. Hold on a second. Second. Um, Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much for being the voice. And oh, I'm not the voice. There's lots of voices. <laughs> yes, and raising the voices of hundreds and thousands of others that this all, this will affect. Yeah, um, there's so many people here that have come out in support of this. It's it's incredible. It Absolutely. Really thank you. Okay. 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 <laughs> now we're good. Um, so there have been a lot of a lot of people charged with uh, criminal trespass. Mm -hmm. I find that very interesting since we're charging Native Americans with criminal trespass on treaty lands, which were never ceded to the United States of America. Um, so there's been this ongoing kind of, you know, treatment of criminal trespass. Um, there's also been uh, charged with inciting a riot, even in situations where we know that uh, protectors, water protectors, are engaged in peaceful uh, direct actions. So praying and singing and trying to, you know, show that these are sacred lands and um, being charged with a riot. So being charged with really aggressive, violent behavior when we've seen all the violence happening on behalf of the police. Right. What are some of the, what are some of the direct expressions happening, uh, the response of the police? What are some of the things that we've seen? The police have been heavily engaged in macing people and using tasers and, um, you know, all these different violent means of pushing back Native American protectors and their allies. Uh, I myself actually was almost struck directly in the face with a beanbag round um, as I was calling out the uh, police for serving and protecting the interests of the people and instead choosing to serve and protect the interests of the pipeline. Um, a police officer took aim and I was pulled back just before the uh, round actually exploded right next to my head. Um, they were trying to, very hard to, to hurt us and they were hurting many, many people all around. Um, that happened last Thursday. And do you see, um, do you see an undercurrent of racism? I mean, I, I, you know, I think North Dakota has a really long history of running over indigenous rights and the relationship of North Dakota to indigenous people is one that's very, very tense. Um, I think that, you know, we see the racism boldface in the sense that the pipeline was actually rerouted from Bismarck, a largely white community, um, and put directly north, uh, half a mile north of the Sandy Rock Sioux Reservation. They rerouted it because they were concerned about contamination to the drinking water of Bismarck, um, but somehow those same concerns did not translate to the reservation, which is, you know, totally on its face, racism, environmental racism. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um... You know, in terms of, uh, uh, can you maybe talk about uh, the role, that we're, what, we, what we're seeing of our elected officials, the, the governor, Obama, you know, we're seeing really soft, uh, you know, we're seeing human rights violations, really soft response on behalf of the administration. And then now this uh, uh, interview, he actually threw under the bus Standing Rock and BLM obliquely. Um, so I'm just curious as to, what your thought is? It may, you know why hasn't he an, issued a, an, a request for an environmental impact statement? So you know, maybe what, what's your comment on that? So at the North Dakota level, um, you know Sheriff Kirkmeyer has been very busy trying to paint Native Americans as aggressive and using all these really um, old stereotypes of Native people as uh, kind of violent, savage people, and you know has responded accordingly with with very violent uh, interactions with the police. And at the same time, we've seen the governor, you know, having a direct interest in the Dakota Access Pipeline, having monetary interest in this, um, and doing everything he can to call in extra resources to have more police doing these things against Native American people who are using their constitutional right to peacefully assemble. Um, you know, and all the, all the assemblies have been peaceful, you know, none, none of these folks are armed. 
Um, they're armed with pipes, you know, and they're armed with drums and, you know, prayers. Uh, you know, when you our, say pipe, you might want to oh. distinguish pipe for... <laughs> yes, so from, for, uh, the, you pipes know? <laughs> are, the pipes are ceremonial objects. So I'm talking about things that are very, very sacred to indigenous people um, and very powerful. And those things are being stripped away by the police when they're arresting people. You know, they're taking them away from them and not returning them or dropping them on the ground, you know, treating them, treating these sacred objects with no respect at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when people are arrested for, for misdemeanor charges, a lot of these people that are in here right now are being held for, uh, are being arraigned for misdemeanor charges. They were all strip searched. If you have a braid, they were, you know, their braids were pulled apart and searched for weapons. These are incredibly demeaning and demoralizing acts um, intended to, you know, really bring folks down, you know, and, and try to like break their spirits. And instead, you know, there's been this groundswell of people that have continued to come to Standing Rock to stand with Standing Rock. Um, you know, from our federal officials, we've seen basically no response but delays. Um, you know, President Obama's words of let's wait several weeks to see what happens is not a response at all. You mm -hmm. know, that is a, <laughs> it's a complete cop out as to what's happening. I mean, this is happening in 2016 in U.S., uh, sure. you know, it, within U.S. borders, there's this, there's this violation of human rights happening right now, sure. and the president's response is, let's wait several weeks and let it play out. That's not a response, and it's, it's you know, incredibly uh, shameful, I think, of our federal government to not represent and not support indigenous rights and indigenous values, um, particularly from President Obama, who is one of the strongest tribal presidents in history. You know, he has this really great relationship with tribes, or has through his administration, has started several initiatives for Native American people um, with a heavy focus on youth, on Native American youth, and that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for youth and the right to their drinking water and the right to their survival. Great. And do you want to make a comment on uh, him uh, issuing an environmental impact statement? You know, I mean, we've, we've asked, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers. That's what the lawsuit oh, is oh, for. Oh, sorry, they won't hear my question. Yeah, so. no, the, the, the ask from the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe is to do an environmental impact statement on the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, we want a full environmental review, right? I mean, that, as, as the people, we want a full environmental review. If these projects are so safe, then you shouldn't be concerned about doing an environmental impact statement. Um, instead, though, that, that request has gone unheeded, and they did a very low-level environmental assessment. Um, you know, the, the Army Corps of Engineers has discretionary authority to issue and to, and to conduct an environmental impact statement, and it chose not to. Um, you know, that's a violation of not only indigenous rights, these sacred places and cultural sites which have now been destroyed um, and can never be replaced. Uh, it's also a violation of the public trust. You mm -hmm. know, we have a right to clean drinking water. We have a right to know that the projects that, that threaten that water are actually safe. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been done. Great. And uh, what, is there a, what, what would be the call to action for people either to divest uh, from the banks or to call on Obama to issue the, and the Army Corps of Engineers to issue that? environmental impact statement and what is the what what would an EIS do sure um, you know there is a call that's gone out for uh, on November 15th you can actually go and find an, a, your local Army Corps of Engineers office and you know directly tell them uh, do an environmental impact statement stop this project from happening if you do an environmental impact statement we know that it's not going to pass those high level those stringent levels of review um, an environmental impact statement would do exactly what we have been asking for. It would consider cultural sites. It would consider impacts to sacred places. It would consider impacts to the public public health. You know, it would consider impacts to the water quality and the risks that are that are at issue that we're so concerned about. Um, you know, all of those things would be accommodated by that, and it would put this project on hold. You know, for a long period of time because it should have been done in the first place. I mean, the fact that we're sitting here right now. And there hasn't been an environmental review of a 1,200 mile pipeline. It's 1,172 miles, right, of pipeline that's going through multiple water crossings, going through the drinking water of 17 million people. How can we say that we would not do an environmental impact statement on something like that that poses such a great risk? Great. Thanks, Tara. I'm going to go. Thank you so much, Tara.